Hi, this has been Night Cry with Deborah. I'm glad to have you with me again today. And I have a word from the Lord I want to share with you. First of all, I want to ask you to share this video everywhere that you can. It is a powerful word in a dream that the Lord gave me an unbelievable dream. I, I was so shocked at this dream uh, three or four mornings ago. Uh, it took me a couple of days to sort it out and to even know whether it was from God. And suddenly it just, the understanding, the revelation of it just burst upon me yesterday or the day before I can't remember so I'm I'm really wanting to get this if you have Facebook which I don't uh, please share this link uh, for this video help me get this word out it is such a powerful word and a right now word to the remnant of God and to those that are hungry for God this is such a, a crucial and important season of time that we have already the Lord showed me we've already moved into it whether or not you know it whether or not you believe it doesn't matter you've moved into it and God is going to reveal the reality of that to you um, so please um, whatever you have that you can share this on um, please feel free to take it and you know cast it to the four winds so if you are in Africa and you're listening to me I understand many of my people are in Africa I love you you are special you're precious to me um, many friends in Australia many friends in the UK I have some dear precious friends there um, we are praying for people around the world and I know that you are too. We're praying for America. We have not lost hope. Anything but. Uh, I don't think I've probably been more encouraged in my life. And this is a powerful word that you really need this. You need this word. So please share it. Please like it. In fact, just stop right now and tell you you're going to like it. So go ahead and click like. And um, then you won't have to try to remember to do it after you've had this stunning word. So um, it's December. Well, what is it? It's December the 6th. And um, I wrote these scriptures down on December the 5th. Just going to start with the scriptures. Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I'm telling you, these words are about to come to pass in your life. I guarantee you. And, and, you know, we, these are words that we've all read, but I'm telling you that they are about to break forth in your personal life and your ministry and your job, your work, whatever it is that you're doing. God is going to make this come alive in your life. Isaiah 26, 20, I think it's 26. No, it's 22, I think. I'll put it in, I'm not sure. If you can't find it in 2620, look for it in 2220. I wrote it down, can't read my own writing. Come, my people, enter into your chambers. That's your intimate space. And shut your doors behind you. You're going to understand these scriptures when I tell you the dream. And shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. And then the next one I want to read straight out of the Bible in the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. Hallelujah. My Bible's too little. I got a giant print and it's still too little. Um... In Exodus, the 12th chapter, and the 22nd verse, 
and you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. We are living in a season of time. I don't want to give my dream away. We're living in a season of time where we must have the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of our house meaning we are the house the blood of the lamb has got to be on us every day every day every day that means every sin that you commit get the blood on it the blood will not only cover it will destroy obliterate remove every sin from your life if you speak a word that's unkind repent if you do something unkind, repent. If you think a thought that you shouldn't think, don't voice it and repent. I'm telling you right now, we're living in a day where it is very, very much like the day that Jesus walked in. He himself walked in the fullness of the Spirit. The Lord is about to put the fullness of his Spirit on the body of Christ. And we're going to walk in such anointing and such power that we're going to have to guard our mouths and our eyes and our ears of everything we hear, everything we see, everything we speak, and our minds with the helmet of salvation, our shield of faith in our hand, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God that is able to discern the word of God in you alive in you the living word is going to be able to enable you to discern between good and evil right and wrong someone that's of God someone that is not of God so he says in verse 23 for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians and when he sees the blood I'll tell you I feel the presence of God right now <laughs> When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow, not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. That is a sure word from God. Okay, I got to move on. Revelation 3, 10 through 12. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell upon the earth. The Lord is going to keep you, beloved. Listen to me. This is so powerful. You're not going to have to keep yourself anymore. You just stay in love with Jesus and he's going to keep you. To test those who dwell upon the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. That's the overcomer's crown. He who uh, Do you realize a crown means you are in authority? Okay? That means when you say to one go do that, they go do it. When you say to another, come here, they come. It is just exactly like the centurion was saying to Jesus. He said, if you'll just speak the word only, I know my servant will be healed because I too am a man under authority. The Lord is about to bring us into a place where the authority of Almighty God is on us in such a powerful way we will know it's not us, it's Him doing everything that needs to be done in our lives. So he said, hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Okay, we are the temple. The body of Christ is the temple. The Lord is, go is coming to abide and live in his temple because his temple has been being cleansed. You've been going to the Lord on a daily basis, crying out to him, not only for your family, but for your life, for your work, for your uh, uh, ministry. Everything that is going on in your life, you've been you've been going to God about it. And he sees that and he's giving you an overcomer's crown and he's making you a pillar. A pillar is something that the whole building rests upon. Many of you have not moved into your place, but you are about to, well, you may already be moved into it, but some things are about to happen and break forth in the body of Christ. Oh, listen to me. This is so good. 
in the temple. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. That is a place of abiding. And 22 Revelation 22 verse 14 Blessed are those who do his commandments that may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside the gates are dogs. Now nothing against you all that have dogs but dogs are considered an unclean animal and they it says outside are dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral that's immoral in any way sexually even in your thought life I'm telling you God is about to deliver many people in the body of Christ that have unclean thoughts these are demons ministering to your mind and you're still doing unclean things. God is going to deliver you from those unclean things if you will listen to this word and submit yourself to God. The sexually immoral, these are all outside the city, and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. All right, now I want to move on quickly to this dream. I received it at 3.01 a.m., on 12 3 2023 okay on this night I awakened suddenly from a strange dream it was such a horrible dream I didn't even want to think about it much less tell it to anyone here's the dream Michael and I had moved to a, mo a new place it was like a rental it was not quite like a motel it had furniture in it, but the furniture was not ours. I was aware in the dream that it was a temporary place. Our belongings were scattered everywhere, and it was a bedroom. I was in the bedroom. Michael was there. He had already gotten into bed and asked, what, what was I up doing? I told him I was looking for my lotion. And I, I pulled out drawers and it was stuff, all kinds of stuff in the drawers. It wasn't really mine that I could recognize. It was all jumbled up. Everything was strode in the room. I couldn't find anything that I was looking for. And I said to him, well, maybe it's in the bathroom across the hall, which is really weird as well. So it was kind of like a motel, but it wasn't because the bathroom was across the hall. And I knew that Oddly enough, it was our place. It was unfamiliar, but we were staying there. So I went to the doorway, and I jerked open the door. You know, just like, you know, I, you know, you're not thinking. You just walk to your door. You open up the door suddenly. And to my horror, facing me like it was they were waiting, leaning against the opposite wall as well as leaning against the closed doorway of the bathroom were six bandoliers or bandoleros or uh, yeah they were they were guys that they looked like Mexicans no offense but they looked like they were straight out of the old west days they had some of them had uh, cowboy hats or no hats, stringy hair, dirty, unkempt. Uh, one of them had on a sombrero. Several of them had bandoliers that were across them, which were filled with bullets across their chest. And they wore dirty clothes, and they were armed to the teeth. They had pistols on their belts. They had knives. A couple of them held rifles in the crooks of their arms. You know, like right here, you know, the, the rifle was, was down uh, across their arm and the butt end of it was behind them. It was very strange. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Wow. I And when I jerked open the door and saw them there, they all smiled. I mean, it was this wicked, mocking, stupid grin on their face. And when they did that, it revealed broken, dirty, like tobacco-stained teeth. And I slammed the bedroom door. I'm like, I'm so shocked. I'm, I'm like wide-eyed, I'm sure. 
I shut the door and for a few seconds I just stood there looking at the door. I was hardly able to believe or take in what I had seen. In fact, I couldn't hardly believe that it was real. I thought, I must be dreaming. So I jerked open the door again and there they were. Still grinning this stupid grin and I realized it was like a bunch of demons who think we've got you now. One of them, I assumed the leader, started to take a step toward me as if I was welcoming him in and I slammed the door in front of him and I awoke with a start. I was relieved it was only a dream. I sat up in in the bed unable to sort it out. It was so real. It was so shocking. I went to my prayer room. I prayed over it, but I received no understanding. So I just continued on my usual reading the word, praying. That was when I received some of those scriptures that I've already shared. But on the next day, December 4th, I was worshiping the Lord early in the morning and His presence came so near. It was so sweet. I cried. Tears were dripping down my face. I often cry in the presence of the Lord. Almost always. And suddenly, I understood the dream. I wasn't even thinking about the dream. I was just thinking about the Lord. And this is what He began to speak. And I wrote this down to share with you. You are moving into a new place. It's not particularly a place that's going to be pretty. It's not going to be a place that may you may even understand. But my remnant who love me have heard the call. And many of them have already moved. Some of them are in the process of moving. But the shift has already taken place. Some are already there waiting on me. It is a place of intimacy with me. That was what the bedroom represented. It's an inner chamber and nothing will be familiar to you in this new place. It really revealed to me that in this new place we're going to see the stuff that we don't need that don't belong there Maybe it's not even ours. Maybe it's stuff that's been put upon you by other people who have tried to trash your life. You open up the drawer, it's a bunch of junk in there. The Lord's going to help you clean up your place. He's going to help you empty it all out of everything. Maybe you were abused as a child. Maybe you're still being abused as a grown person as a man or a woman. Maybe you're being abused by a boss. Maybe you're being abused by your teacher. Maybe you're being abused by your spouse. Maybe you're being abused by your children. Perhaps they're grown. Perhaps they're not. But God says, I am about to enable you to clean up your inner chamber so that nothing can get in that needs to be there, that doesn't need to be there. You've learned that this world is not your home but the place of intimacy with me is your home I am your home you are safe there with me oh (laughs) this is meant for some of you this is meant for you I, I feel some of you are crying right now The Holy Spirit is ministering. You just let Him. Let the tears flow. Let the pain pour out. God's going to heal you. God is healing you. He's in the process. He's been in the process. Not only of those that need healing from abuse, but those that feel shame from your past. Something you've done you can't forgive yourself for. Oh, dear Lord, please help me move on. I know this is important to you. So just let it come. Let it let the Holy Spirit minister to you. He says, I am your home. You are safe there with me. 
You may not be able to find your belongings that you once needed, but I will give you all that you need. I am your beloved, and you are mine. In me, you will find provision, peace, and protection. In this season <clears throat> that you are moving into, where I'm moving my entire remnant into, will be of necessity, it, it will necessitate or be a necessity to only open the doors I open. Beware of trying to open your own doors looking for the things that even I have promised you. Beware of trying to make the vision that even I have given you come to fruition. Outside these doors of intimacy with me, the enemy awaits to steal, to rape you, to pillage, to murder, or destroy you and take everything from you that I have given. Tell my people, this is to me, tell my people they have now entered a delicate time. It is even a dangerous time in the spiritual realm. They must walk softly. They must listen intently and keep their eyes on me. Do not open any doors for yourself the doors that God has for you are just going to swing open. You're not going to have to push. You're not going to have to try to manipulate or make anything happen. They're, the doors God wants you to go through are just going to swing open before you. I am warning my people, only walk through the doors I open to them. In the intimate place with me, you will have everything I want you to have. I will provide for you. And I am calling forth Esther's and Daniel's. I've got another message that I'm going to start after this one that I'm going to put on um, probably by Friday. I want you to be looking for it. It's going to continue with this revelation about Esther's and Daniel's. It's going to be very powerful. Please look for it. I'm calling forth Esther's and Daniel's. They will only need what I give them. In 2023, they will be prepared by my hand and no other. I will provide in abundance for them and they will know and understand me and I will send them forth in each of their own times to lead my people out of bondage, out of pain, out of suffering. Many even now are unknown, but I myself will lift them up in due time. Be strengthened, be courageous, be filled with my love and communion with me. I will heal many of them in their body. So don't look at your inabilities. Look at his ability. Do not say, I am too old or too tired or I'm untrained or I'm ill-equipped. All that you need to do, all that you need to do what I've called you to do will be given to you freely. Doubt it not. Fear not. Do not look to the past. What you've gained from the past that is good is within you. Leave it all behind and follow me. If need be, leave family. If need be, leave land. Leave houses. Leave jobs. Leave churches. Leave anything God tells you to leave behind. Everything will be provided for you. I love you with a love you cannot imagine or comprehend. My power upon you gained in the place of intimacy will open every door I want opened in your life. No one can shut these doors. My protection will shut every door of distraction and pain and destruction and nothing and no one will be able to to open it. Only obey me. Trust me implicitly. I will not fail you, my beloved. God bless you. That's it for today. Why don't you just start this over again and listen to it again. And please share it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I love you. Be blessed.
Bye for now.